Hi y'all, it's Susie. Welcome back to my craft room. I'm kind of uploading late today. I haven't been feeling real well the last couple of days and uh, it turns out I've been running some fever and it got pretty pretty serious yesterday and uh, last night. Um, but I was able to go uh, kind of get checked out. Uh, that's just a whole nother story, but it, it turns out that I have an infection and that's what's causing the fever. I, I knew it wasn't the coronavirus because um, I haven't been anywhere or been around anybody. So anyway, um, I have some medication now and uh, I should be back on the top shelf in a couple of days. But I wanted to come back and show you the results of the coffee dyeing that we did yesterday and the tea dyeing. Um, I think you'll be pleased with the results. These first pages are ones that I did with the instant coffee. You'll see that there was just a little bit of, um, it looks like it bled through. It did not. This actually came from a page that was put on top of it. And I, I should have remembered to put my uh, my writing, you know, the, the printing on top of each other so it wouldn't do that. But I don't mind because you can't read what that says. And even if you could, it nothing really significant um but anyway it, it's no problem anyway because you know i can uh, you know use that for uh, you know the back of a tag or you know a tuck or something so anyway um i think these turned out really really pretty and all these are the printed pages you know the junk mail and stuff that, that we used yesterday and uh, like i said you can uh you know darken this up by using more coffee or you can lighten it by using less. You know, that's the nice part about the instant coffee is you get to control. And again, you can see just a faint hint. And I actually like that look. Uh, you can't read anything. You can't even really tell it's words. It just kind of looks like some places in the paper, which kind of makes it look more old. But as you can see, the writing actually goes this way and not that way. So it was where the paper on top of it was sitting. But I thought the coloring on these turned out beautifully. Um, where you see these lines, that's where a, a, a piece of paper was set on top of it. Where you see the darker places is where the coffee kind of pulls in those little pockets. Um, so you get some really pretty, interesting looks um, from that. This one looks really pretty with the pooling marks. Um, okay, and then we get to what was our uh, used coffee. And as you can see, this doesn't have uh, much of a color at all. Uh, it's just, you can tell that it's not bright white. So it does give it a, an aged look. Um, and I like this look for some things. Um, and I certainly, you know, if I'm doing a vintage journal or something, I would prefer this, obviously, over white. And then you don't have to do so much distressing and such of it. So, but um, the used coffee does not work near as well as the instant coffee. And like I said, you can use, uh, you know, regular coffee, uh, but, you know, to save money, of course, you can use the used coffee. Uh, and then this, again, you can see where a paper was sitting on it. You can see that the printing was actually this way, but some where I had laid it on top showed up that way. Again, I don't mind that. Now we get into what was um, you, done with the tea. And this didn't die real evenly, but that's okay with me. I like that look. Now this one did bleed through. Um, and the reason, I don't know why tea and it will bleed through almost always. So whenever I use tea, I almost always use just regular copy paper um, and not my junk mail. Because I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is. It can't be the acid. But this is actually coming through from the other side. And almost always when I use tea bags, it does that. Uh, I'm not scientific at all, so I wouldn't have any explanation for why the tea reacts differently. I should, um, I guess, put some baking soda in there to take some of the um, acidity away. I apologize, my dog's barking. We've got a storm coming in, and I think he thinks somebody's out there knocking. Um, but that is the problem with the tea. But the color turns out beautifully. So had we done that just on regular copy paper, these would have been the colors that you would have gotten. And some of these are where they were sitting on, you know, with the other coffee and such. 
So anyway, that's how our papers turned out. Um, I hope that you are, are happy with the results. I really am. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to start deciding on our papers and looking at uh, how what exactly we want to put in our journals. We're going to uh, start working on our magazine pages. Um, I told you I would show you some ways to take the shine off. Well, one of the ways is, is by using some clear gesso, and we haven't made that yet. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll do that tomorrow. It depends on uh, the fever and, and how weak I am. I've been very, very weak today. Um, but I did want to come on and go over this so that tomorrow we could be ready to actually start deciding on pages, deciding what size we want our journal to be, and looking at different ways that we can um, make a journal cover. So I did tell you I wanted to show you uh, what to look for when you go to um, any stores to buy books to repurpose. Um, let me say there are, there are two different reasons that we buy, well, there's probably more than that, old books. Um, one, well, there's a lot, I guess. One is we want the images out of them. This happens to be an old uh, children's encyclopedia book. Um, and some, sometimes we want the images out of them. Uh, and that's why we get them. And that's why I bought this one, obviously, because I thought it was really a kind of cool looking book. But I picked this one out to show you today because of one of the other reasons we're going to talk about. Now, this book, I, this is a good cover. This cover is in great shape. Um... You know, it could be left exactly like this and made into a journal as far as the cover. Uh, or it can be covered with fabric or paper. Um, so however you choose to, you know, do your covers, we'll, we'll get more into that as well. Um, but this is an older book, and I hope you can tell by the color of the pages how aged looking it is. Uh, this is a, a book about plants. How to grow almost any, everything right. Okay. And so, I wouldn't just take these pages and put them in there for somebody to read. But I definitely take these pages and tear them up and use them for ephemera. Um, back here, there are some images. And I could, you know, tear out these images and color them in or just leave them in the black and white. Um, there's not too many images in here. Just a few. Um... But you can use the ones that are in here. And this is actually another plant book. But this is a new book. So you can see that this is really white. But uh, and, I, and I want you to get used to the feel of paper. On this particular book, you can tell this is extremely, extremely thin paper. And that's not the most ideal paper to use. Um... And this paper, it's obviously an older paper, and although it feels more fragile, you'll feel that it's it doesn't have that slick surface. It's a much thicker uh, paper, and that's the kind of, you want something that, that feels good in your hand and um, that has a little bit of, of weight to it. So that's, you know, some of the things you want to look at. And this um, is actually thicker even than the other one. Um, so even if I didn't want to use any images out of this, this would be great paper to use to back things with or whatever. Now, what I do want to show you, there are two different um, types of, of journal covers. There's the ones that, that you make and you sew your signatures into. And then there's times that you will use a book and, and alter the book, meaning we're going to take pages out of it and only use a few of the pages that are left in there to make a journal out of. Um, because we do so much to our pages, there's no way that we could leave, um, you know, 258 pages in here. Because when we get done, it would be open like this. It wouldn't close like this. So we, we're going to have to take, you know, probably three quarters or more of these pages out um, if we were to use this book. Now, another thing I want to show you, and I'm hoping you can see this, it, it's late and it's dark, so I don't know if you're going to be able to see this really well, but right here, you can see that there are separate signatures. That means that, that pages, a whole bunch of pages are folded together, 
and stuck in and sewed into there's actually a piece of fabric back here and it's actually they're actually sewed into the fabric and so that is a, a much stronger book obviously and those are really the kind of books that you're absolutely going to want to have if you're going to do an altered book now i keep talking about signatures and oh if i open the book you can see them better but uh, when we find a signature and it's pretty close let me see All right, in this particular book, when they put the signatures in, they went back and glued the last page of this signature to the first page of that one. So that would actually have started the signature, you know, but they glued it. So then we're going to look for the middle of the signature. It should be right about here, give or take a page, right here. And then you can see the threads in the middle of the signature and each one of these signatures and I don't know how many there are about um, looks like one two three four five maybe nine or ten signatures we will never have nine or ten signatures in our journals um, but of course we don't bind them like this another way you can tell <clears throat> is when you do the book like this you can much see the uh, the separate signatures much much better but when we go to take pages out of this book we will actually open it to the middle of the signature and start lifting pages out. That keeps our pages kind of whole, um, plus it takes the pages out that we don't need. This, this particular book also has signatures. You'll find that in the older books, that they more often have the sewn-in signatures. They're, they're not just glued in like they, they do now with, with the more modern books. Um, and I don't know how many signatures are in this. I can't see well either. Looks like about four or five. Let me try to find the middle of this signature. I did pretty easily. And you can see the threads. And again, if I'm going to take this book apart, I would go to the middle of the signature and I would start lifting out these pages. And then I would use the images. And here's an example. And you have hardcover books and then you have paperback books. Um, some people prefer paperbacks and some prefer the hardbacks i like the hardbacks because i like you reuse the covers and i know people reuse the covers on the paperbacks but um, most of the time i won't even use the spine that comes on the hardbacks i, I make the spine uh, custom to whatever thickness i want my journal to be um, i don't do altered books that often because i kind of like to put my own pages together but that's personal preference there is that's the one thing in junk journaling. There are no rules. It's your way. However you want to do it is the right way. Um, and there are no mistakes. If you think you've made a mistake and something looks awful, it's always fixable. And if, if you just think there's no way to fix it and you're done with it, you've been trying and trying, it's just paper. I mean, it's, it's just paper. So it's, it's not like, you know, you're, you're out in the great big, you know chunk of change or anything it's just paper and maybe a little glue um so don't stress out over a piece not looking like you really wanted it to like i said most things are fixable we can put you know a sticker on it we can stamp an image over it there's so many things we can just sew it you know paint over it there's so many things that we can do to fix something that we don't like so <coughs> don't <coughs> excuse me don't give up um on a on a piece just because you don't necessarily like the way it looks all right getting back to this now this book is does not have signatures it is glued all these pages are glued in in this book it's really easy to tell because you can see a great big wide strip of glue right across there and remember i showed you how the <clears throat> you have like a gap right here you're not going to have that in a glued book. And I don't think there was a gap in this one, but the yep, yeah, well, because the book is kind of tattered and torn, it was obviously a children's book. Um, but obviously it's not glued to the spine like it is on this particular book. And these books are fine if you're just going to use, you know, tear pages out of them and use them, you know, for backgrounds or what have you. 
Um, and what I mean by background, let me just grab kind of a piece. Let's say this is happens to be a pocket, uh, a little envelope. And let's say I wanted to mount this on some um, page. I can mount that on there, and that looks really good, uh, you know, with the, the words behind it. Um, to give you an example of what it would look like, say, on this. And now because this is more of a vintage-looking piece, it looks better on this aged book than it does on the newer white book. But see how pretty that looks with just the book page behind it? So we, we use a lot of book pages, and there's going to be a lot of times that we'll be making pockets and tuck spots. Um, let me see if I can. Here's, uh, here's an example of, of an envelope. We'll probably be making this one, um, and we'll make it out of book page. And so you can do so, so much with book pages. Now, most of us end up with lots and lots of books that we tear apart because we go in, and I'll show you when we get to that, but, and we very carefully, very carefully cut this out, and we go to the back, and we do the exact same thing. Like I said, I'll show you exactly how to do that when we, when we get there, um, and that's to try to preserve the spine and the cover. I think this book would make a great book to leave the spine on um, and with a plan in mind of using it, say, as a day planner or uh, kind of a, an agenda book, a kind of to-do book, something like that, where you're not going to heavily embellish it. But, however, remember that you want to make it pretty. Um, whether you're male or female, you want it to look nice. If it doesn't, you're not going to want to use it. I mean, you're just not. Um, let me get an example. All right, this I picked up, I believe it was at the Dollar Tree. I love the color of the pages, and I'm going to use the pages. Uh, but just to write in that, there, you know, it's, there's just not much interest there. Here's another one with the leather cover. It's just blank pages. And when you open a journal to a blank page, it's like that blank page is staring back. You don't know what to write or what to do. Once you already have something on the page, it becomes so much easier to add to it, whether you're going to write something or put a picture or, you know, maybe you went on a trip and you've got your ticket stubs, you know, to a movie or you've got plane tickets or whatever, and you can glue those down <coughs> to the page or put them in a little pocket mount a photo you don't have a blank page staring at you trying to figure out what to do with it so anytime that you kind of decorate it up regardless which way it is to suit you and that's what this is about is suiting you um, then you'll find it much more enjoyable to work in and, and you'll use it um, <coughs> My other recommendation is that when you make a journal, make two. The first time you make one, make two. Um, you may say, oh, no, I don't even know if I'm going to like this or if it's going to turn out. Trust me, it'll turn out. Um, but when people see your journal, they're going to want one. And that will give you the opportunity to sell one. And you can take that money from, from that and buy you some more supplies. You know, maybe get you a paper trimmer or you know, get you some, uh, you know, fabric glue or, you know, whatever it is that, that you're wanting to get, that will help you. Uh, tomorrow, if, if I'm feeling a little bit better, we're going to try to make some marbled paper really, really inexpensively. Um, and that'll give you another option of, of papers that you can use. Uh, I need to, to get to the Dollar Tree, but I don't think that's going to happen in the next day or two. Or maybe, you know, I can get a friend to go for me. Um but that's pretty much it for today. I, I wanted to show you the results of what we did yesterday. I wanted to discuss the books in case you get a chance to go to a thrift store or even the Dollar Tree. Now, of course, at the Dollar Tree, you're not going to find any, you know, great feeling pages, you know, the thicker pages, you know, that they, you know, for a dollar, you're just not going to do it. Um, and you're, I don't think you're going to find any with signatures. I might be surprised. Now, something else you might want to uh, pick up. Um is like a coloring book whether you know it's a child's coloring book an adult coloring book you know maybe like a children's workbook something like that and we'll collage all over the pages 
Um, and then as you need a page, you'll have it just page after page that you put scrap pieces. Um, and trust me, you are going to have all kinds of scraps. That's not really my scrap basket. You will end up with all kinds of scrap pieces of paper to uh, do stuff with. And when you do, you're going to say, what am I going to do with all these scraps? I can't just keep accumulating scraps. Well, we're going to start gluing those down to some pages, and we're going to make some uh, some scrapbook pages and such. Um, or not, not scrapbook pages, I'm sorry. We're going to make some glue pages, um, some collage pages, where we put those scraps, where we glue those scraps onto a page. And... You would be surprised. You're going to think when you make it, oh my God, that's such a mess. That looks horrible. Well, but you're not going to probably use the page. I mean, you can. And you can, you know, once we get it all collaged, once you fold it in half, then that takes away, you know, half of what you were looking at. And then by the time you put an embellishment on it, then guess what? You don't see the whole page anymore. So you're going to be really, really surprised at how wonderful they turn out to be. Um... So those are some things that we're going to look at. Uh, I hope that this helped a little bit, help you kind of figure out what kind of books to look at. If you're a senior or disabled, I know that the Goodwill, you know, in the United States uh, on, on Tuesdays, and I think it's every Goodwill, on Tuesdays I think it's 25% off, um, and you can usually go and, and pick up these books. You know, they might be priced at, you know, a dollar, and then you can get them for 75 cents, or it might be $2, and you, know, you can get them for a dollar and a half. Um, and so, you know, if you can, pick up a couple old books if you don't have any laying around the house. Um, most of us do have some old books hanging around. I've got literally hundreds of books, uh, probably thousands. So I'm not in a shortage for books. But I find myself, every time I go in, looking and sometimes, well, almost always picking up a book. Thank God I don't get out much. Um, so anyway, I hope that helps. I hope that gives you something to look look at and think about um, and to consider and, and start getting your papers together so that uh, we can start figuring out what size cover we want. I, I want you to get the pieces of um, chipboard like from your cereal boxes, cake boxes, things like that. Get your chipboard together because we're going to end up cutting it to make um, our journal covers. So um, I want you to get started. I don't want you to get discouraged just by going through. Okay, well, I get it. I get it, you know. No, I want you to get started. And then we can look at learning more and more techniques. I don't want it all to be about techniques and you never get started. So we're going to go ahead and get started by choosing some pages. Um, I hope you've already, you know, taken some images out of magazines. I want you to bring your magazines because the pages that you didn't take anything out of, we're going to end up gluing those together to make a thicker page. We don't want to waste anything. So um, get your glue, get your, your books, um, magazines, papers, whether you've, you know, coffee dyed them, tea dyed them, left them blank, you know, got just junk mail, whatever. Bring all that along. If you have a, a a paintbrush or a foam brush, um, whatever to apply glue with, that would be wonderful. Um, if you don't, if you only have, you know, bottles with the nozzles on them, that's fine too. Uh, so just, you know, get your papers together. That's going to be the main thing for tomorrow is to get started putting it together and deciding how you want it. You know, maybe you want a garden theme. Maybe you want no theme. Maybe you want a pink one. Maybe you want a blue one, you know. You get to decide what you want. It's all about what your preference is and what your intentions for the journal are. So anyway, I hope y'all have a wonderful night. I'm sorry that I'm, I'm downloading late today. And uh, I pray that I'm going to feel better tomorrow and that y'all are going to have a, a great day tomorrow as well and be blessed. And I will look forward to talking to you then. See you later. Bye.